All right, in this tutorial, we're going to learn some basics of working with number variables. Now, when you work with variables, remember it's a three-step process. First, you'll create the variable, and then you'll adjust the variable, and then you'll use the variable. So the first thing we want to do is always create that variable. So let's take a look and see what we're, what we're looking at in this example. So in this example, we created a variable to count the number of clicks the learner makes on the slide. We named that variable count clicks. And what we want to do is just count the number of times the learner is making an incorrect choice, right? So after the third time, we want the learner to receive some feedback. So by the third time, it counted the number of clicks on the slide, giving me some feedback that says it's not right. Try again. Oh, wait, this is the one that doesn't go in the box. And then I get some feedback. All right, so if you're following along, go ahead and open up your practice file and click on the practice slide. All right, so the first thing we want to do, right, the first step is to create that variable. We want to create something to hold and count the number of clicks that the learner makes on the slide. And we do that by creating a new variable. And we do that by clicking the Manage Project Variables button. And here's our variables window. So the first thing we do to create a new variable is just click this plus sign. And we're going to call this count three clicks. It's really helpful to give the variable name something meaningful to you. In this case, we want to count three times. We want to know when the learners click three times on the slide. So this helps me um, just remember what this variable is going to be for. Now, we're not going to work with a text variable, right? Or true false. We want to work with a number because we actually want to count the number of times the learner has clicked. Starting value is zero. They haven't made any clicks. So zero is a, an appropriate starting value for this. Go ahead and click OK. And you can see Storyline has now created the, the variable for us. I can come in here and rename the variable, but I can not change the type of variable. Once you've created a variable, that type is set. If you want to choose a different type, you just need to delete the variable and create it again. But you can adjust the starting value, and then the use count just tells us where it's been used. So at this point, we're only on one slide, and this is the slide that it's on. All right, so go ahead and click OK. So one thing that's always helpful when you're working with variables is to work with a reference variable. And all the reference variable does is it just displays for you the value of your variable. So in this case, we just created one, right? We created one called, you can open it up and see it's called count clicks. And regardless of whether you're new to variables or you've been working with them for a while, a reference variable really makes it easy for you to verify that things are working the way they are. And this is all it looks like. So we want to come up here to insert and text box. And I'm just going to click on the slide. And right now it's just an empty text box, right? So I want to keep that active and I'm going to come back up here to insert and reference. And reference means I want to reference or call or display one of my variables. In this case, I only have one, right? The count three clicks. So I click OK. And there it is. It's just a text, right? Just some text right there with the variable name. And it's um, enclosed with a parenthesis sign enclosed with a percent sign. And if you feel like typing this out, you could easily just type uh, control T, right? And then percent sign, and then whatever your variable name is, and then percent sign again. So it, it, you could type it out. You don't have to go through the whole process of, of adding it, but that's our variable. And right now we know that the variable is set to what? It's set to zero, right? That's our default value. Click OK, and let's preview it. So we should see a zero up top. And because we want to count the clicks, we want to verify that as we go through this project that things are working or counting or displaying the way we intend them to. And there's my zero, right? That's my starting value. Okay, close the preview. Now let's just go through the list right here, right? I want to set up a trigger, right, to adjust the variable. That's our second step. First, we created the variable. Now we want to adjust the variable. And we can do that by adding and using triggers. So I'm going to select my flashlight and I'm going to create a new trigger. And what I want to do is every time you click the flashlight, whether it's once or twice or, you know, 10 times, I want to count that click. Okay. And here's how this works. We already have our variable set up. So my action is right. The second step, adjust the variable. I want to adjust it. I want to add something to it. I want to subtract something to it. So here's my variable count three clicks. And then you see your operators. And these are what you can do to variables. You can set the value, which is the assignment. And then you have your basic operations. Well, we're counting. So we want to just add 
a number each time the, the, the learner clicks on the slide. So the operator is add. The value in this case is a value. We don't want to add another variable. We're going to add a value of one when the user clicks flashlight one. So let me show you how this works. I'll go ahead and click OK, and let's preview it. Okay, so the starting value is zero, right? That's what we set it up, set up as the, the, the default value. That's what we'd expect. But what I want to see now is each time I click the flashlight, I want to see that zero increase by one. And there we go. Each time I click, I can see we're adding one more value, one more to the count three clicks. So once we have this, we can start to make decisions based on when the number reaches a certain number of clicks, right? And that's the, the goal for this. So we'll go ahead and we'll set up triggers for each of the remaining items. Let's go ahead and click the close preview. Now, since we already set up the trigger over here in the panel for the flashlight, I can just copy this. I can right click it, choose copy, and then I can drag a selection around the remaining three objects and then paste it. And it's just a fast way to uh, work when you're doing uh, set, setting up. It's just a fast way to work when you're working with triggers. And I don't really have to do anything different either because we want to add one each time the learner clicks each one of these items, whether it's the flashlight, the hot dogs, the water. We're always going to add one to our variable count three clicks. So let's just go ahead and preview that to, to verify that it works. So preview the slide. And again, the starting value is zero. Let's try clicking something different. The water adds one. Hot dogs add one. Click it again, it adds another one. All right, so each of these items is adding or adjusting the value of our count three clicks by one each time we click it. So it is working the way we'd expect. Go ahead and close the preview. All right, let's pull open our slide layers and see what we have here. Now we created a couple practice layers for you. One is called Great Job. You get some feedback in the center of the box. And then we have another one, Try Again. So we want to show the Try Again when the learner has clicked three times on the choices. And we do that by evaluating what the current value of our variable is. So what is it we want to do? We want to show a layer. We want to show the try again layer when our variable equals three. So let's go ahead and add a trigger for this. So we create a new trigger. This time we want it, what is it we want to do? We want to show a layer and that layer is the try again when, not when they click, but when a variable changes, right? The variable changes is this variable that we set up. Whenever this changes and it equals something, we can then tell Storyline to do something different. So when the variable changes, the variable is the count three clicks, and we need a condition for this, right? Count three clicks changes. Well, if we leave it like it is, as soon as it changes from zero to one, it'll show the layer. We need a condition to say when it equals a certain amount. We can do that by clicking the add new or condition. And this time it's a variable, count three clicks. What's the operator? Operator just means what is it going to equal, right? When it's equal to a value, in this case, of three. Right, we could do a equal to or greater than, but since we're always going up by one, we're increasing the value by one, we can just set it directly equal to a value of three. Let's go ahead and click OK. OK. And let's go ahead and preview our slide and see how this looks. All right, so it's at zero, which is our starting value. I click this as one. I'll click something else. It's two. And I'll click the hot dogs. And so as soon as it equals three, I should see my feedback layer. And there we go, right? As soon as it equaled three, I showed a new layer. Go ahead and click. Oh, we didn't set the hot button yet. So let's close this. And we'll jump back over here to the try again. And we just need to add a trigger here that says close this uh, layer, hide the layer. So a new trigger. In this case, we don't want to show the layer. We want to hide it, hide the current layer when the user clicks the multiply button. Okay. So let me try this again and preview it. So this slide, all right, zero. I'm going to click through each one. C3. Go ahead. It's not correct. I'm going to close the layer. But what do we notice here then? Well, my value is still set to three. I need to reset that value to give the learner a new try, right? They've already reached three. So we need to set this back to zero and then let them try again. And we can do that by just adjusting the variable on the try again layer. And so when they click the hide layer, we also want to do one more trigger, one more thing, and that is change the value or adjust the value to zero. So add a trigger. 
adjust variable, right? We only have one variable, the count three clicks. And this time we're going to work with the assignment. We're just going to set it directly equal to a value of zero. And that's the starting value. That's the same value we set it to when we created the, val the variable. Go ahead and click OK. Jump back down. And let's just preview it one more time to verify. All right, I'm going to click through each one of these. There's my three. That's my layer. Click close. And now we set it back to one. And now we keep going through. So we actually set this up correctly, resets the value each time we click the close layer to jump back and try it again. Go ahead and close the preview. And the only thing left we have is to set the trigger for the hot dogs, right? Because that's not what's supposed to go into the box. When we click this one, it'll count the click, but we'll just set it up over here to immediately jump to this layer. And we do that with a simple trigger to show layer, right? So new, new trigger, show layer, Great job when I click the hot dogs. And let's go ahead and preview the interaction one more time. All right, let's go ahead and try it. We should click the hot dogs and we should immediately see the correct layer. Great job layer. All right, so that's basically it. And again, when you're working with variables, the first thing you're going to do is just create that variable. Uh, give it an appropriate name and choose the type of variable that you need to work with. Sometimes you can use uh, any type of variable and it doesn't matter. Other times like this, when we want to count, you know, we have to use a specific variable, in this case, the number variable. And then the second step is to adjust that variable, and you always use a trigger to adjust the value of it. And then you need to use the variable, whether that's to display a value or to make a decision. So like we did in this example, we showed a layer. When the variable clicks, equal three, we showed the try again layer. So now it's just a matter of you practicing the activity, finding a reason to use variables, and then applying it to your next e-learning course.